Hello everybody, welcome to Tamio's Journal. My name is Tom and I'll be your chronicler and we're here today to play some magic. So what goes on in the journal is I take games from paper, bring them over to Arena, show you guys some of the fun decks I've been playing and kind of the tips and tricks on how I play them. So not all games will be winners but at least we can have some fun and kind of see how they went. I don't just play meta decks so I like to kind of build some fun and janky brews so if you are kind of interested in those sort of decks please stick around and uh, yeah see how it goes. So if you do like what you see, you can check out the full article of how the paper games went over on our website, which is tamiosjournal.com. And if it's not too much trouble to ask as well, if you wouldn't mind doing the old usual YouTube stuff, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And if you do have any questions, I'll be able to answer them as soon as I possibly can as well. So let's jump into the deck today and see what we're playing with. So this is Kaya's Sagas, and it's a deck that I've had so much fun playing with already. It's based around Kaya and her minus 5 ability, so you want to exile as much as you possibly can from your opponent, walk them out of the game and then hit them with the minus 5, hopefully deal 10, 20 damage. You can do it twice if you need to normally because you're going to have such a lock on the game at that point that they probably would have conceded it anyway. But it's basically black white control, so you've got Moment of Craving, Kaya's Wrath, Mortify, Cry of the Canarium. These just keep the board nice and clear. Cry of the Canarium is pretty handy as it also has the exile effect on it as well. We've also got Karn in there as well, which is pretty handy if you need to make Karn Struct as blockers to keep yourself going. And then we've kind of got a couple of other artifacts as well that synergize well with that. So, Treasure Map, make sure we can scry, hit our draws, Thematic Compass, which acts as a Maze of Ith. Really, really handy against Drakes, I've noticed as well. And yeah, also we have some other win conditions just kind of tucked away. Smothering Tithe is really handy. If you know your opponent's probably not going to pay too much to kind of keep you off the treasure, but if you want to use Mastermind's Acquisition to grab, say, a Revel in Riches and get a win, then yeah, it's a, a nice little backup plan just in case. So the rest of the deck is kind of built around the sagas and the kind of combos that fall into that. So we've got things like Fall of Thran. Phyrexian Scriptures and the Eldest Reborn just to kind of, you know, either take our opponent's stuff or exile all their cards as well. So once we jump over to see the rest of this kind of combo, I will fill you in with the details. So sideboard wise, we have things like Duress against Control and also a Banefire, which we can grab with Mastermind's Acquisition to kind of finish them off. The rest of it's kind of built around kind of niche situations. So you have Lyra against Aggro, you've got Revitalize against Aggro and Richless Suits. Elders are born against decks that have kind of the one creature that you want to grab if you need to kind of swap them in for other things. Revel and Riches is another thing you can grab with Mastermind's Acquisitions if you've already got the 10 treasures. And then everything else, so the Nature Spiral and the Tragic Poet are really handy for just getting your enchantments back. So if you're playing against someone that's got a ton of removal but you don't need to have things like your sweepers in, you can sideboard them in, keep getting your like enchantments back, like Fall of Thran if they've destroyed them with a Mortifier or stuff like that. And yeah, keep the game plan rolling again, which is again, super handy. You have kind of unique mana if you've got the treasures going so as long as you get a treasure map to resolve you'll be okay. So this deck is a little bit combo as well so you've got things like the sagas from Dominaria which kind of push up Kai's minus 5 ability into overdrive. We're able to use things like Phyrexian scriptures by putting plus one plus one counters on creatures that we don't have, destroying all those non-artifact creatures and then exiling all cards from our opponent's graveyard. This in kind of tandem with Fall of Thran as well is pretty handy. So if you can stack the triggers properly, you can destroy all their lands and then exile all their cards as well. Which, once your opponent doesn't have any lands to get back, it's unlikely they're probably going to have any lands to play. So you're going to be miles ahead. And if, you know, your minus five from Kaya hasn't done, at least you're going to get some more turns to kind of build it up and keep going. And then eventually, you know, most people would concede at that point anyway. So you're probably going to win. So Remorseful Cleric is the other kind of way that we can use this to our advantage. What we can do is if we are about to play Fall of Thram, we can basically float all our mana, put down Remorseful Cleric, let Fall resolve, and then, yeah, exile everything instantly. So if you don't have the Phyrexian Scripture loop set up already, you're able to kind of just quickly take everything out. The other kind of advantage of this is with Smothering Titan in play, next turn your opponent's going to have no lands, they're not going to have anything they can bring back from the graveyard, so they're not going to be able to pay two anyway, and you can just get so much mana from this that it doesn't really matter if you've already chucked everything away, then it's, you know, game over. You're going to be gaining so much mana, you're going to be having card advantage because your treasure maps will be coming back down again when you can get them back. It's going to be, yeah, almost far too much for your opponent to deal with, which is, you know, a great way to win. Just quickly before we jump into the game here as well, don't be afraid to use a removal. So the whole point of the deck is this black-white control, just use it when needed. Don't be afraid to kind of chuck away Akai's Wrath on one creature. You want to keep the board as clear as possible so you can set up your combo. That is the most important part. If you're going to use things like Elders Reborn just to clear off one creature, just go for it. So let's jump into our game and see what we do. So good luck, Fahar. 
you are playing is a fairy, which is slightly worrying, but we'll take the play. And yeah, this is a pretty good opening hand. We've got Thematic, which is really handy for getting lands out once we use our combo. We've got Smothering Tithe, which is obviously very handy, and a couple of removals. So no combo pieces. It's quite good if you get the Kai in, but yeah, unfortunately, we are off to an alright start. So a big thank you to Wizards of the Coast as well. I emailed them asking if I could change my name over to Tamio's Journal to be a little bit more on brand. And they were really happy to help me out as well. So yeah, thank you very much again if you guys are watching. And for those eagle eye viewers that have noticed already, we're all on brand. So opponent's probably on Golgari or Sultai maybe? Which could be slightly worrying if they start playing the cards that can remove enchantments. Yep, it's Sultai. So we'll see how this goes. Just playing Lana War Elves. Obviously, we can sweep the board on four. That's fine. So yeah, we've got all our lands now to keep everything going. And we can scry at the end of their turn, which is also perfect. So let's see what happens. So four mana open for our opponent. What will they do? Hostage taker. That's a bit worrying. Will they take the treasure map? Might take the compass. Having a little read. That's fine. We'll scribe with the treasure map, see where our next row is. Mm -hmm. Get a bomb that. Not too much use at the moment. So it takes the compass, but it's also tapped out, so we will get it back, which is fine. And yeah. So now we will shock ourselves with black mana. No, you fool. We're just going to mortify the hostage taker then. Bit of a misplay there, but that's okay. At least we get our compass back. Again, holding on to Kaya's now, I guess, in case... Oh, that's a bit troublesome. Is opponent going to get a little bit of card advantage? Yep, it's fine. Just gets a forest. It's in for two. We can now sweep the board cleanly. Perfect. So a little bit of an advantageous one there, even though it was a bit of a mess up, but that's fine. Gonna hold on to our land at the moment. We don't want to play it if we are gonna follow Thran soon. Another Wild Grove Walker, wow. Big advantage for our opponent. So we're gonna play Smothering Tithe now. Pop down an isolated chapel and put a stop on our opponent's upkeep so we can start scrying, getting a little bit ahead. So let's see if our opponent starts paying for this. Giving us treasures, very dangerous at this point. We are about to start flipping treasure map. And then we can just have this kind of infinite card draw loop until we hit our combo piece. So yep, Chupacabra's fine. Gets in for one, that's okay. And we're gonna scry now. Oh, my opponent just decides to scoop. I'm not sure why. So opponent being quite lazy. So yeah, against this kind of stuff we want a little bit of Eldest Reborns, we want... Tragic Poet as well. And... Hmm, I guess maybe a couple of extra ritual suits. So we're going to drop down one mastermind. This might not be quick enough. Drop down a Karn. We're going to go down Dawn of Hope because I don't think it's too useful. It's better in aggro. And what else should we take out? Mm -mm -mm. Guess go down a Smothering Tithe because they'll probably have Assassin's Trophies now. And go down a... Uh, maybe just two Eldest Reborns actually. We'll see how that goes. So yep, we're running back. See what happens. Not too sure our opponent's scooped up there. Potentially being quite lazy. <laughs> Don't want him to play against us. Thinking this is too much of a weird deck. So that's a pretty good opening hand. We'll keep it. Bit of everything. Turn one Lanamore. That's fine. Yep, so we'll just play a Goddess Shrine tapped. No need to shock ourselves. Don't have any turn one plays. No. Put him with a wild growth. Now, my kind of understanding of Salta is they always have wild growth on two and then a jade light on three. So let's see if that's true. Ah, just a branch walker. Not too bad. So that's fine, trying to force us to have a big kind of removal spell, that's okay. We can always use Mastermind if we need to go grab it, but at the moment we don't. We'll see what our opponent plays, and we can maybe mortify if we need to as well. So we're going to try and hit the Wild Growth at this point. It's pretty dangerous. 
Yep, so I'll just grab that before he comes in. Doesn't have any blue mana for disruption, so get in nice and early. So that's fine. Clear that off the board. And yeah, this is all good so far. Oh, tapped land. Great. So we're just going to pop down Karn. Pretty useful. Unfortunately, that does take away the Mortify for our Fall of Thran, which is a bit unfortunate. But we're just going to make a Karn struct here. Act as a blocker. You can deal with at least a couple of things. Oh, cast it down. So, yep, keeps us alive for another turn at least. Next turn, can always Elvis Reborn. So, yeah, these black decks have a lot of removal against us, but it's playing out a lot of his stuff now, so we're okay. He's probably going to play another land. It's definitely not going to be expecting the Fall of Thran combo, so what I might do is. Do I go grab a cleric? Might just go grab the other mortify from our deck to be honest. And set up for next turn. Doing a little combo wombo hit. So yep, just gonna grab one of these. Opponent doesn't get to know what we grabbed either, which is quite handy. And yeah, we'll see. We do have to deal with these creatures at some point, but we've got a couple of turns. We should be fine. Oh, and there's a Kaya. So we're going to play Okaya. I just think the best opportunity to kind of start upticking this. Try and force our opponent to play a couple more lands. Exile the creature as well. Pretty handy. And yeah, we've got the Morify up as well. If they do play something like a Crassus that we can't deal with, we can just get rid of it straight away, so that's fine. So opponent's probably going to come at Kaya. Yep. Buys us an extra turn. That's fine, we'll just let that happen. Might be able to draw into a sweeper here. So we'll see what happens. Playing another land. Perfect. So again, holding onto our lands. Ah, do we make them sack something? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, there's no reason not to play Eldest Reborn at this point. Yep, sacks that, that's fine. So we will just up to Kaya, gain a little bit of extra life, get rid of the Rastus Contempt. So no chance for them to use Fine Finality or anything as well, which is pretty handy. Uh, yeah, don't play a land out. So we'll see what our opponent does now. So we don't really have anything to do after we follow Thran, which is why we're not just playing into it. Ooh, that's a nice one there. Hmm. So I think we're just going to try and bait them out. Play the Cleric. Pass the turn. You can kind of play as a pseudo blocker, but we'll see if they actually try and hit this. And then of course we can get it back with the third part of Eldest Reborn. So we'll see what they do. And this way we can at least keep a removal for something else and we don't have to sack all our own lands as well. So it'll give us a bit more of an advantage, which is pretty handy. So right, we are good to go. So we'll just put Kaya back out now. Play our Fall of Thran. Oh no, do they have it? Contempt, interesting. So are they gonna hit, yep, Kaya. Still okay. Not too worried about that. Exile all your lands. Oh dear. Play planes, pass turn. 12 in exile, it's pretty good. If we can find the other Kaya, we're going to be in great shape. And yeah, it just scoops it up. I mean, you know, people just don't want to play against this. It's really fun to keep the exile lane going. I think they probably would have won depending on what we would have drawn, but hey, a nice wee win for us. Fantastic. So I thought our opponent was going to time out here, so I've just skipped ahead a little bit. But this opening hand isn't too reasonable. The planes, you know, it's a bit unfortunate. We do have every other card that we kind of want, but can't keep one landers in these situations, so a bit unfortunate. So, mull down to six. Much better. Kaya in the opening hand, very, very handy. I think we're going to leave our compass on top here as a play. 
The compass is really there as well that if you need to grab lands after you've resolved Fall of Thran, if you don't have a Smothering Tithe there as your mana generation source, which is pretty handy. And obviously if you can get all three pieces on the board, then you'll be able to quickly get your lands a lot quicker than your opponent will. So you'll be able to have more plays. So we'll see what our opponent does here. Taking his time. And they're on blue-black. All fun and games. So, yep, again, some sort of gate stack potentially. Gateway Plaza. So, we'll just get our compass on the go. And yeah, the compass, at least, again, good way to grab out lands. We'll be able to get Kaya down, start up taking that next turn. They're probably going to play something like a Gatebreaker. No, just straight up Thought Erasure. Interesting. Takes the Kaya, that's okay. There's another one in the deck, and Eldest Reborn can obviously get that back out as well. So, I mean, it does look like a Gates deck, but... We'll see. Gate deck, obviously, very slow. We do have a lot of main deck removal to kind of deal with our creatures. And we can obviously exile the Gateway Colossus as well if we've got Kai out. So, four mana. Let's see what they're going to play here. Guild Summit. So, hopefully draw Mortify. <laughs> um, but, yeah... That's going to have some trouble with Smothering Tithe, because if you're going to draw a lot of cards, I'm going to take advantage of that. So hopefully we get something that can deal with that. If not, they're going to get a huge amount of card advantage, but we do have the mana for Fall of Thran already, which is quite handy. So if our opponent does decide to play something like Circuitous Route, we're going to at least be able to destroy their lands, and they're only going to get four back, which in this deck can be enough, but... Again, gate deck does have a lot of main deck removal. Yep, so he's just going to start getting all his lands out. That's okay. Might even be able to mill him out, potentially. Who knows? But will our opponent pay for anything? So, yep, he's going to get a ton of stuff here. It's perfect. So, now we've got 8 mana as well, which is pretty good. Oh. So yeah, what I'm going to try and do here is stack the triggers of these properly. I'm going to keep a hold of our lands at the moment, we don't want to play them out. So opponent can't play into anything now, they can drop down a massive creature, otherwise all their stuff's going to get exiled. And then yeah, on turn 3, we're going to be able to exile their whole graveyard. So we'll see if they... Yeah, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't have played Securities Route myself. I would have saved the ramp for afterwards, but... Oh, we will be able to... He's still playing at lands, wow. Interesting plays from our opponents. Just giving us a lot of land. A lot of mana as well, so we'll see what happens here. Again, I haven't played this into the Gates matchup. I think I maybe played against it on paper with a mate, which... I'm pretty sure he said this was the most degenerate deck he'd played against this standard. Which is pretty good. That's what we were kind of hoping for. And yeah, it's really good fun when you exile all their gates and they can't do anything else about it. So, see? Oh, plays into it. Fantastic. So, if he taps out, we're good to go. Excellent. So, we're going to exile those lands. He's going to be stuck. I have to try and draw them. That's fine. Destroy all our effect creatures. Okay, that's good. Combat phase, and we will just fall of Thran. Keeping our mana as well in hand. Destroy all the lands. Yep, so hopefully draw a treasure map so we can start taking advantage of this. So, free money for us. Excellent. And there's another gate. So, yep. So... We want the scriptures trigger first. And then obviously have our Fall of Thran trigger second. So we'll leave it like that. Exile. <laughs> All your lands. Oh no. So we get to return two lands. Pretty handy. And we'll just pop that in tapped. And we're just going to play another Smothering Tithe. And yep, Putin wants nothing to deal with that. So, pretty lucky there, we got the combo off. 
against Gatebreaker Ram. What do we take? So we'll take some Duresses because it's quite slow. We will take a couple of Eldest Reborns and... Hmm, do we want card draw? Mona Craven going to be pretty useless in this matchup. They might be running FIFA Sanity if they're playing black, but I think get rid of the sweepers that are not going to do much good. And do we still have enough kind of main deck removal? Yeah, I think we're going to go for top end removal here and see what happens. So, <laughs> it's one way to beat decks. If they don't have any lands, they won't be able to play any of their nonsense things. And yeah, we are able to get our combo off there. Pretty handy. So here we go, uh, yeah, so at the moment this is not too bad, we've got a Mastermind's Acquisition that we can use to find something useful, we've got Karn for a little bit of advantage, we've got an Artifact, have a Wrath which is what we need, and we've got some other Tithe as well, so we'll keep. The Gate versus Gate matchup, although I don't think I've seen a variation that has black gates in it, but I like the kind of twist I guess, you can play Thought Erasures, you can play... Loads of interesting things. So yep, get our compass out. We can start grabbing lands and thinning our deck if we need to. Will we have a turn 2 Thought Erasure? So yeah, Mortify would be really handy, but again, not the end of the world. I think we want to get the Smothering Tithe online first. We've got a couple of Karns in our deck, but... Well, and there's a second Mastermind as well. So just pass. We're just going to start thinning our deck now as well. So at the end of their turn, we're going to compass. I'll just do it now. Grab something. And we will grab a swamp. See, so yeah, this way as well, we can get our Kaya's Wrath online without having to shock ourselves down. Life might be a little bit important if they've got things like Banefire, so we want to just be a little bit more careful about that. So we will play Smothering Tithe. Has our opponent sighted in the gates? Maybe. So let's see what happens now. So will they give us a treasure? We shall see. So the good thing here as well, if they don't pay, Karn Strokes are going to start getting really big really quickly as well. It's another win condition, just going to keep everything happy, but it's pretty useful. So probably going to take our Sweeper here. Oh, take some masterminds. Interesting. So, yep, just play a land. And yeah, we're just gonna put a card stroke down. See if our opponent tries to kill that. But yeah, this way we can just kind of make sure their life totals not getting too high in case they do want to play the long game. And yeah, every time they give us a treasure, our little token will get bigger. So I don't think they would waste the gates of blaze on one creature. Then they don't. Hmm. Do they run the ram in this version? I have absolutely no idea. No, it's just colorless. Okay, so that's fine. So we're just going to start uptaking Karn. Don't want to play into something that's going to get our Mastermind's Acquisition negated or something like that. So it's playing it rather carefully. Um, we're just going to start thinning our deck again. No reason not to. Just going to be able to hit more consistent stuff. So we're just going to put planes out here as well. And yep, just pass the turn. We do have a Contempt up if we need something. But yep, forgot to attack there with the Karn so that was pretty stupid. But that's okay. Again, it's not our main win condition, but it's just kind of a secondary one if we need it. So, yep, yeah, that's fine. Gaining a lot of life, but not doing much else. So opponent's going to give us the map here. I think I'm just going to try and get it to resolve. I mean, we've got another card if we want to use Fall of Thran. Yep, so there's one negate. That's fine. So 
we are going to shock ourselves now. Get this treasure map online. And make sure we get a little bit of extra damage now. So we've got a Maze of Ith now with Spire of Araska. If they do have one big threat they want to try and get in, it's not going to resolve, so that's fine. Gets us a treasure. Very kind of you. So what will our opponent do with all this mana? Guild Summit, that's fine. And yeah, the card advantage could be really handy if they tap out here though. Mm, holding up in the gate. <laughs> They're gonna start making our card stroke pretty big for us, which is nice. Thank you very much, sir. And yep, Smothering Tithe against the <laughs> guild deck. Pretty handy little, little bit of tech, which is quite nice. So yep, I think we're gonna just negative Karn. We'll take that, just to make sure it's in our hand. And I think we're gonna try and cast Mastermind's Acquisition and grab it. Big Bane Fire here would've been okay as well. Oh, that's pretty clever tech. So what's our opponent going to search for? They are tapped out now, which is kind of the plan. And we do have enough mana to do a follow Thran. So we're going to grab a Cleric. We're going to... Hmm. So we're going to follow Thran first. Destroy all the lands. Play the Cleric, exile all their lands. And yep, that has worked out absolutely perfectly. So play a cleric, sack a cleric, and yep, <laughs> an opponent skips it up. A good sport, but yeah, I mean, you're too far ahead at this point. You've got constructs, you've got treasure tokens. What can you do? So we'll jump over to the post game wrap up and uh, talk a bit more about the deck. So the deck went 2-0, which is really good, and I'm really happy that it actually worked. Uh, yeah, I've played this deck before on paper and I got absolutely hammered by a lot of people, but most people were playing Esper that day, so it kind of shows the glaring weakness that we don't have any kind of counter magic. There are things like Duress and Banefire in there to pull out, but sometimes it's just a bit too slow. So everything else also seems to be really good. I mean, the first matchup against Sultai, we were able to kind of just get ahead of them a lot quicker and yeah, it's a lot more grindy than you can expect with some of these matches, but we can hold out and hold our own. We're able to get all our combos off as well, so we didn't get the Kaya minus five, but we were able to hit Phyrexian Scriptures and follow Thran at the same time. We were able to use a Remorseful Cleric to get rid of all our opponent's lands. And generally what will happen is you're just going to be too far ahead on board and you'll have something else there as well that can just kind of clean up or get you to that point. So the treasure maps are very handy for making sure you hit your drops. All the sweepers in there are just really good against aggro. The moment of cravings, the Veraskas gain you some life. There's a liar in the sideboard, so if you do need to go grab that with masterminds on turn four, you're gonna be ahead by turn five anyway. And yeah, obviously I just love all these saga cards. Everyone knows I love his tribunalia from the last video, but over Christmas I treated myself. I was like, I'm gonna make sure I buy all these sagas, but they were all actually really cheap. So things like the scriptures and the eldest reborns and the full of thrands were, you know, a 50 cents or something or what I, well for us 25p so it was uh yeah ridiculously cheap which was nice and i'm not gonna be able to play these cards after rotation but i really wanted to make sure i built a saga deck before uh everything rotates out in september so hopefully war of the spark will bring something else to this deck uh, you know maybe a couple of extra planeswalkers will be a bit of fun through it but i was really happy with this and yeah black white control kaya sagas as i like to call it there's definitely other ways you can build this but i thoroughly enjoyed it so as well, we are going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this video. So if you're interested in entering, please just make sure you subscribe down below, leave a comment. We're going to be giving away a J signature spellbook. So if you are interested in entering into that, just let me know. And thanks again for watching guys. Obviously I can't do this without your support. So cheers again. So the most important part of magic for me is the community. And I would absolutely love for you guys to get involved as well. If you have any kind of deck tips or decks that you'd like to share, if you just pop me a message over on social media, I'll be able to take a look, try and give you some help and kind of tips and tricks on how I would get around building things. And yeah, we can all just kind of share this together as well, which would be great. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like what you saw, you know, please do the usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe. 
We've also got our page over on Patreon as well if you want to support the channel further. There's going to be some sweet perks up on there. And if you do want to see how the paper games went as well, please check out the full article over on our website, tamiosjournal.com. So Tamio's Journal is also part of the Creators Quarter community. This is basically a group of us that have been working together to generate some great magic content and you'll be able to find all their stuff in the playlist in the top right just over here. And if you're looking for more standard content, why not check out the rest of our playlist over here as well. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you again soon. Cheers.